Father, we come to you now asking that first of all you would forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Father, we also ask now at this time that you would bless us with your word. And Father, let us hide it in our hearts. And Father, let us live it throughout all of our emotions and all of our lives and every part of our being. Father, for we know that in your word there is love, there is compassion, there is humility, there is strength, there is every good and every perfect gift. And Father, I just pray that we share it with our whole life. I pray that we share it with those that don't know you and the pardons of their sins. And I'm asking, Father, that we share everything that you have given us that it might compel men to the saving knowledge of you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So again, Father, teach us and feed us till we won't know more. And it's in the precious name of Jesus I pray this prayer. Amen. 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 I'm, uh, I'm at one of those points again in, in preaching that my mind is kind of all over the place. So you have to kind of pray for me. Uh, that's why I had to sing, keep me near the cross. I'm at a point now where it's very easy for me to get into self. Because my mind, again, is wandering, and so much has been going on this week. It's been kind of a full week for me. But I know at the cross I can lay all my burdens down. At the cross I can get some directions. Because at the cross he showed me where I'm headed. He showed me where life could be much better. And it's all in him. So at the cross, where I first saw the light. And maybe that's the message for us on today. If you get tied up in this world and lose your way, go back to the beginning. Go back to the cross. It'll put everything in perspective. But I want to get off into scripture. And we're going to look at Matthew First chapter 7, uh -huh. verses 28 and 29. Uh -huh. And we're going to read through to chapter 8 and go from 1 to verse 4 as well. We're going to tie all of that in together, or at least I'm going to try to tie it all in together. Uh, I've gotten to where now I quit telling you what I'm going to preach and what I think, because... <laughs> 
there's one cometh after me, the Holy Spirit, and, and, and it's really his message. So you're really just looking at a vessel here. But if you know like I know, you'll sit under the full fountain, and he'll give you the word. Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 28. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Chapter 8 goes on to say, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, if thy wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said unto him, See, thou tell no man. But go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And uh, I want to preach for a little while about the effects of preaching and teachings on the hearers. The effects that will come about from the preaching and the teaching, the effects that will come upon hearers. We have the really the only preacher teacher this world has ever seen. Amen. And it goes by the name of Jesus. Amen. He has just finished the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. And the Sermon on the Mount was a sermon that most of us are not accustomed to attending. Because the Sermon on the Mount, some people have shortened it by saying it was for some hours because they could consider it to be just part of the Beatitudes. But really, if you study it, you'll understand that this Sermon on the Mount took the better part of a week. Because in the, when you look at it, the Sermon on the Mount, it went further than the Beatitudes. It gave instructions about the equally important issues like witnessing, uh -huh. obedience, yeah. Yeah. prophecy, well. anger, uh -huh. lust, divorce, uh -huh. integrity, retaliation, uh -huh. love of our enemies, well. caring for the poor, uh -huh. prayer, fasting, uh -huh. money, criticizing others, uh -huh. and going to heaven, a servanthood and faith. So it went further than the Beatitudes. And I say it went further than the Beatitudes because all that that I listed, some of us have suffered most, if not all of that. This Sermon on the Mount was a complete sermon. It covered everything. Everything that you'll ever face Everything that you'll ever hear about, everything that someone will bring to you, the Sermon on the Mount covered it. So now you have a complete sermon, and you have the true preacher, the true pastor, the true teacher giving it. And then when we move to verse 28, it says, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended this saying, the true preacher the people were astonished uh -huh. at his doctrine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm talking about the effects that preaching and teaching have on the hearers. Uh -huh. The Bible says that they were astonished. Uh -huh. and, and it said when he had finished, the people were astonished at his doctrine. Yeah. When we look at doctrine, we looking, we're looking at a set of beliefs. Yeah. The people were astonished at the set of beliefs that God had set forth for his people. And these, when we look at Jesus preaching, we can put ourselves somewhat in his position. 
but we can't hold his position. And, and our doctrine has to be complete. But he, there were great effects on the hearers when they heard Jesus and his doctrine. But we as preachers don't preach our doctrine. Let's be extremely clear about that. The doctrine that Jesus preached, they weren't what he had heard or had learned. It was him. Because again, he taught about love and he taught about forgiveness. And if you know like I know, that's who he is. That's not what he does. That is his essence. That's, that's all he's made of. He preached a perfect gospel. And he didn't preach again what he had heard or what his father had told him. But he taught what he was. And then again, and we as preachers, if you really want hearers to be astonished and in amazement at your doctrine, you have to abide in him. See, we can preach what he preached, but we have to be sure that and be sure and let people know that we were brought in to his doctrine. And see, because if we're not brought in to his doctrine, we will preach our doctrine. And you know there are imperfections in our doctrine. Because in our doctrine, we'll love you until. We'll love you if. We'll love you conditionally. But in his doctrine, we'll love you unconditionally. You know how it is. We can look past your faults and see your needs when we teach in his doctrine. But in our doctrine, when I see your faults, I'll turn my back on you because I don't want it on me. And I don't really have the patience and the kindness and the love and the temperance and the justice in me. But because we have been adopted, we've been adopted now into the hands of the Father. And you know when you're adopted, you receive everything that the Father has for you. Even if you're not his biological child. And I've heard the preacher say one time, now that you've been adopted, you're even closer. Because now you're adopted, he has accepted you as family. And even by the law, they look at you. So you have a paper now that says that I am yours and you are mine. And, and, and when, when, when the father is so loving and he adopts you, you ought to shed off all your wicked ways. You ought to turn loose what the world put on you and follow your father because he's shown a love for you that you couldn't find in the world because he adopts you because he loved you. He gave you everything that he has because he loves you. He proved himself to be mightier than any man could ever be. When he says, I am God, and I am controller and ruler of all things, and I'm going to make you sonship. I'm going to make, you, uh, make it all available and for you and for your good. And the best thing about it is I paid the price. I paid the price for a child that really doesn't love me because the Bible says while we were yet enemies, Christ died for me. And can you imagine somebody being your enemy, but you still love him enough to give him everything that you have? I'm just trying to let you know that ain't nobody like Jesus. Ain't nobody like God. You can try your own mother and you can try your own father, but, but ain't nobody going to love you like Jesus. Nobody's going to love you like the father. And, and they were astonished at the doctrine that he taught. And when we look at astonished, we're looking at they were greatly surprised. They were impressed. They were amazed that one could speak such a strong and pure doctrine. You know what really got him? He was talking about, again, divorce. He was talking about loving your enemy. He was talking about all the wickedness that we're going to face in this world. But his doctrine astonished them because he had an antidote for it. He said when, when, when they hate you, the enemies hate you, you know what the scripture said. 
He said, pray for them. You, you know, when the enemy is on your trail, he said, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. You have a father that's going to fight all of your battles. That's what astonished them and amazed them because they never understood that why would a God fight for me? Again, you, you, you may have been enemies of God and not realized it, but when you sit down and, and think about it and look back over your life and you see all the, the problems and troubles that you brought to the Father, it's going to have you in amazement and astonished that how he, you could bring all this junk to him and he can fashion you as pure gold. He can put you in the fire when you accept him and you'll come out and the dross will be washed away from you and you'll shine and be valuable as a precious metal like gold. But that's what had them in astonishment and in amazement. And the Bible again says they were astonished at his doctrine. They were astonished in, in amazement that how a God could take everything wrong and bear it upon himself even though he didn't do it. It was the ones that he adopted that did it and he could make it all perfect. I told you God is the only one can take a crooked stick and make it straight. He's the only one who can take an evil people and count them worthy of righteousness. It's only God who can pick a man up out the muck and the mire and sanctify him and put him and make him righteous. It's only God. And, and I don't know about you, but that's got me in amazement. When I look at myself, I, I struggle with washing regular dirt off of me. But this God can wash me from the inside out. That, that's amazing to me. It's amazing to me how a God can die that I might live. I don't understand that because I always knew that whatever died wouldn't come back no more. But Jesus arose. We talked about it on Easter. And maybe you've forgotten about it because we just celebrated on that one day. But every day that you wake up, you ought to say thank you that he arose. And I didn't want to go this way, but I'm, I'm, I'm traveling this road and, and I don't mind riding with him. But this God that we serve, he spoke in authority. And the Bible said, and not as the scribes. All this is getting good to me now. When, when he said he spoke, when he spoke in authority, you know, the only way you can speak in authority is how you have to be the one in authority. You've got to be in control. But if you're not in control, you're going to speak as a scribe. And you know what a scribe is. That's a person who copies. And he has documents. And the only thing he can do is talk about what he wrote about and the documents that he has compiled together. See, we can't be the, those kind of preachers now. I know we need notes every once in a while to keep us going. But it ain't about what you wrote down. It's about who you wrote about. And, and see, he spoke in authority. And I know we're talking about Jesus. And we're finite men. But I, I, I'm here to tell you again, we've been adopted now. You don't have to write about what you think or how you feel or what you feel God is all about. All you have to talk about is the word of God. If you really want to be in authority, speak the word of God. You can read verse to verse and that's enough for good preaching you don't have to add to it and you don't have to take away from it because when you speak the words of your father I told you you've been adopted now and that gives you authority the preacher has authority not because he's so smart or intelligent but because he's a child of God, and every child of God has the authority of the Father. Because when he saves you, he asks you to go and tell a dying world. Not about yourself, but tell him about Jesus and all that he's done for you. Tell him about Jesus who walked the dusty roads of Jerusalem. Tell him about Jesus, the one born in Bethlehem. Tell him about Jesus, the only begotten son of the Father. You ought not have no problem telling him about your brother. And I can call him my brother because he's been a brother to me. I can call him my father because he's been a father to him. But you know what I like to call him? I like 
to call him my savior because again he hung, he bled and he died for me. And when he died for me, I rose with him now. I told you he's the only one that can die that I might live. And I don't know about you, but because I've got Jesus, I like being alive now. I like following the master because every time I talk to Jesus, life gets sweeter than the day before. When I talk about the Father, life gets easier for me. I don't have to hate no more. So stress is relieved when I talk to the Father. When I talk to the Father, he feeds me until I want no more. And I don't know a lot about you, but I'm overweight now. I'm full of the Word of God. And it can't help but run from heart to heart and breast to breast. That's what my father is all about. The father has given us all authority. And I see some preachers in here today, and, and I've got to tell you, preachers, preach with authority. Preach with control. Preach with some honor. Preach with some might. And I'm just telling you what the father has for you. You ain't got to be no coward. You don't have to depend on your own doctrine. That's what, that's what contaminates the pulpit. That's what contaminates the word of God when you start preaching your doctrine. But if you preach his doctrine, we won't have people up here that ain't supposed to be up here. You won't have marriages that's falling in divorce if you preach his word. They shouldn't leave your church and try to figure out what was right and what was wrong because all God's children know his voice my sheep know my voice when you preach God's word you don't have to say I wonder if when you preach God's word people will walk out saying thank you Jesus thank you Holy Spirit for leading me and guiding me because the God is not the author of confusion when you leave the place you got something to debate about that's, that's because you're not teaching sound doctrine that's because you're not walking in his authority and yeah I'm picking on you because I'm a child of the king and he's given me authority to tell all of my brothers when you got it wrong you just got it wrong and if you know like I know and you don't want daddy mad at you you better get it right I'm just giving you a head start you know God will reward you but he also will punish you. You better get your doctrine right. You better get your truth right. You better quit talking about yourself and sit down with my father and let him bless your heart and let him bless your mind. And I know I'm probably, this is going to be on the radio and I know I'm going to get some phone calls about it. But I'm here to tell you, don't call me. Call Jesus. I, do you need his number? I can tell you where he was. He was up on Calvary. He was up on Calvary. That's where he died. He was in Joseph's bar tomb. But even in Joseph's bar tomb, you know, the Ma Mary, they went looking for him there. And the Bible says that his clothes was laid there. His scarf was still wrapped up. His, his clothes were still laid there. And, and then some people said that somebody stole a body. What kind of man would steal a dead body and take all his clothes off? But we know that Jesus wasn't stolen because in that grave, the Bible said everything was intact, but Jesus wasn't there. That means he was resurrected. He left it just how he lay. He was resurrected up out of the grave because if he was stolen, they probably would have left his clothes on. I ain't carrying no dead naked man on my shoulder. But Jesus rose again and, and I told you I can tell you where he's been I can tell you where he hung out but can I tell you where he is he's at the right hand of the father he's seated with God and he's making intercession for you and I and I told you you got to walk in his authority now you've got to teach sound doctrine that's what the word says and I'm just walking in authority now that's why I'm able to stand in strength in might and in power, and if I get things wrong, charge it to my head and not my heart. That's how you make innocent, that's how you get it right with God. You say, God, fix me from head to toe. Where I'm teaching wrong, make it right, Father. 
please forgive me. And a whole lot of preachers nowadays, instead of, instead of asking for forgiveness, we try to justify our wrong. And I'm just telling you this because I'm your brother. I don't hate you, but I love you. And I want you to get everything right. I pray for you. You pray for me. We are all a part of God's family. Just tell the story that you know. Don't tell what you know and not the story. Tell what Jesus has done and tell what Jesus is all about. And, and let them know that he's at the right hand of the Father. Amen. The Bible says that the people were in amazement they were astonished but it also said that they followed him when he left the sermon on the mount the people say they followed him in his amazement in his doctrine this is encouragement to not just preachers but believers when you preach the truth of God even though the world says no, the soul will still say yes. If I, and, and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That ain't no lie, y'all. You tell the truth. You preach the truth, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you treat, teach his basic Bible living and instructions before leaving earth. And it will always draw men. The truth will always draw you. Because everybody is searching for the truth. Even the unbeliever. Don't let them fool you. They just sometimes looking in the wrong place. Some people are looking for the truth in folks that's lying to them. But the truth of the matter is, down in your soul, when God breathed into man's nostril and he became a living soul, that's a part of him that is connected to him. That's what you communicate with him. That's where your spirit is. And do you know how it, may, it rejoices? When it hears the voice of the Father. Anytime it hears the voice of, don't look at what it's wrapped in. Don't try to, to try to deal with God by your flesh, but by your spirit. And every time the spirit hears the truth, he's gonna, it's going to move. He's going to move you now. Help the dust of your body is going to pass away, but that soul is forever now. And, and you've got to make a decision of where you want it to reside. Because you're going to be separated from this body one day. And then you got to make the decision of if you're going to be separated from God and go to eternal damnation. Or are you going to be joined with him and go on to the other side. But let me back up and say it again. You've got to do that while the blood is running warm in your vein. You, you're not going to get, this is a faith step here. You're not going to get here by your sight. This is by faith. You're not going to die and say, oh, it was a God. Yeah, I believe now. No, you better believe now. Faith is when you can close your eyes and still see. It's not about opening your eyes and trying to figure out. You've got to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I tell you what my father taught me a long time ago about preaching. If you're not deep in the word of God, just stay at the cross. Just stay at the cross. If you, if you can't get off into God's word and, 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 dis, and, and teach some things about God's word, stay with what you learn first. Stay with the cross. It's better to stay with what you know than get out there and lie about what you don't know. And I'm going to leave you with that. And, and remember now, when they were in amazement and astonishment, they followed him. This is just a little side note for preachers. I see another preacher that just walked in the house. When you want a big church and you want a big following, all you have to do is preach the word. Preach the word. You know, uh, uh, 10 members that sound in doctrine is a larger church than 100 members that got a fluffy speech. You'll figure that out when you get to the house. I'd rather have 
10 believers then get up here and sing you happy, shout you happy, and you walk out this door. We're in South Dallas. It's a liquor store on every corner. And if I get in touch with you, I don't have to call. I can just stop at the first place of sin and find you. Amen. 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 The comedian said, now run, tell that. 